So today we're gonna to be talking about seven interior design trends that you can buy a vintage. This video is pretty much like my wish list. <laughs> so make sure you're taking notes. Today is Sunday and I was having, you know, the chillest morning. I was just relaxing. I actually was painting a little bit. Let me show you my piece of art real quick. It looks like a freaking second grader drew it. I'm just kidding, no, this is like the beginning stages of oil painting. From there, that's when you start adding detail and layers and all that sort of stuff. This is actually my second oil painting. I feel like that one looks kind of bad right now. Let me show you a finished piece of painting. Okay, this one. This one is my pride joy. <laughs> I started with just drawing the hands, just as like practice. And then I was like, that looks pretty good. <laughs> so I decided to finish it and it's on like, super cheap with like canvas, which I'm sad, but I mean, hey, start somewhere. Let's see, where was I? There are literally too many reasons why you should buy secondhand or vintage. First of all, I feel like vintage items are way higher quality and usually they're a lot less expensive than brand new furniture. Brand new furniture is like super cheap. Usually it's coming from China and like mass produced. On top of that, I feel like vintage items are just so beautiful. There's so much craftsmanship that goes into these items. Either they're one of a kind or there's just a lot less people that have them, so it's very unique to your home. These are the places that I love to buy secondhand or vintage. First is Facebook Marketplace. She's so, so good for either buying vintage or secondhand used items at a really good price. Second is Etsy. On Etsy, I feel like you can find very beautiful, unique, antiques that ship from across the world. The third place to look for are flea markets. Here in SoCal, I definitely recommend the Long Beach Antique Market or the Rose Bowl. And last but not least are garage sales. I feel like you can find gold in garage sales. When I was little, I used to go garage sale hunting with my dad every single weekend. So I feel like it's so like nostalgic to me. Don't sleep on garage sales. I found some good deals. So speaking of flea markets, I actually went to the flea market specifically for this video to show you guys items that I'm looking at and I think are very beautiful and, and just kind of do like a little shop with me. I ended up going with my friends Drew and Marie. It was super, super hot, but <laughs> It was a lot of fun. I'll be inserting little random clips throughout this video for you. That brings us to our first category, which is vintage Ikea. This one's kind of a fun one and it's also kind of easy to find just because you can type in vintage Ikea or old Ikea and you can find a bunch of cool items. Don't hate me for this, but personally, I don't know why, but I, I'm not like the biggest fan of Ikea. Like I feel like they have great like staple pieces, you know, like the Hobbit mirror, the Billy bookcase, some of the console tables, their curtains. I have them right here, super good, super cheap. But on the other hand, I feel like a lot of their furniture is kind of like cheap or I just don't really love the design. But when you look up vintage Ikea, like <laughs> Ikea's designs were like top level. So for example, look at this magazine cover from 1984. Like if I could have that couch and those lights and like everything right now, oh, I'd be lucky. <laughs> I feel like the design and the silhouette is just so, so good. Up next, you have these metal chairs, which are in like these cool, bold colors. Love the wire grid. The silhouette is really cool. Here you can see some vintage Ikea lamps that I actually found on Facebook Marketplace. It's very mid-century, very vintage, and we love it. I think these were about like $100 for both. So there's a lot of good deals to be found. Here are some items that I actually bought from Ikea and are for an up coming makeover project that I'm doing. So that lamp, not vintage, but looks vintage and it's currently on Ikea's website. And I recently bought that floating shelf off Facebook Marketplace. I want to mount those to the wall. I love that specific tone of wood. I feel like it's very minimalistic and clean. It's not that bleached white oak that has been kind of overdone. I believe this is like a birch wood, but that staining is very vintage and beautiful. Definitely a type of wood finish that you should look out for and I would totally buy. When I was at the Rose Bowl, I actually found this little console side table, which reminded me a lot of vintage Ikea. Up next is lighting. I used to be so, so scared of lighting and I feel like I used to be scared of lighting and I really wasn't drawn to lighting because I was used to seeing like very basic, you know, like West Elm, target types of lamps that just 
didn't really do anything. But as I've been getting exposed to the world of vintage and antique items, lighting is one of the most important parts of a home. And you can find some of the most beautiful sculptural lights from antiquing or buying vintage items. I feel like recently the types of lights that I've been drawn to lean a little bit more mid-century. I have been loving colorful lamps recently. So for example, this green lamp right here, I love that it's like a metal base, it's squiggly, so it's kind of unique. You have a glass green lampshade, very unique, cool pop of color, love that. I've actually been obsessing over little red lamps. I don't know why. <laughs> Just kidding, no, I do know why, they look great. Like this lamp is so eye-catching. Something about red and in lamp form is Gorgeous. Also, look at those two sconces that are on top of the bed. Those are definitely vintage. I love how whimsical they are. If those are red, I would be buying them right now. Here's an example of a light that I found on Etsy. Again, it's kind of got a glass top. It also has a unique chrome stand. This one I actually don't think is vintage. I do think it's new, but it does have like a vintage silhouette, which is cool and kind of more so serves as like inspo for what to look for. So this is actually a lamp that I pieced together. Uh, I actually found the lamp base on Facebook Marketplace and it reminds me of those vintage Jenny Lind beds, which I am loving right now. And on top, I wanted to add a lampshade that was just very unique, bright, added color and contrasted the vintage base. So I bought this orange lampshade from Etsy. I'll link it in the description for you guys. And I feel like this is a good example of how lighting can be a fun way to play around in your space. Here are some of the lights that I found in the Rose Bowl flea market. I would totally buy this if it was like in a burnt orange. This has like a really pretty patina and I think would look really great next to like a bed. Yes, yes, yes. Vintage lighting, that's chrome. We love that. All right, the next category to look for is plateware and glassware. Having cool plateware and glassware, I feel like is such a flex, especially when you have guests over. Like how cool is that to like serve your guest wine in like a one of a kind, vintage, colorful wine glass? Like that is such a flex. <laughs> Here I am drinking a Celsius out of my basic Target glass. But hey, this is why I said that these items are my wish list because I really want to buy something like this. All right, so the first inspo photo, it is colorful. And I feel like that's something that you should look for when buying vintage glassware. Get something bright, something that's unique, has a cool silhouette. I think that these glasses check all of the boxes. Here again, like look at all of those colors, shapes, like that is so beautiful. I feel like these definitely capture like the essence. They're a little bit more toned down and also practical because you can like clean them easily. These are actually from Hay Design. So they're a little bit more of a vintage inspired glass but definitely captures the vision and like what you should look for. So for plates, I actually found this artist in the Rose Bowl Flea Market that had these super cool and colorful plates. Ultimately, I think it's very important to have your basic, you know, white dishware, simple glasses that you can use on a daily basis. But I think it's also great to have a set that's unique, captures your design style, and that you can use for yourself when you wanna have a nice dinner or meal, or when you have guests over when you're hosting. Okay, up next, we are going to talk about mirrors. Mirrors can kind of be a little bit tricky and can also be a little bit expensive, but there is gold to be found on Facebook Marketplace or when you're thrifting. Mirrors are literally an interior designer's best friend. They're great at reflecting light in a room, especially if it's really dark, and they can also make a space feel a lot bigger than it actually is. When buying mirrors, definitely look for mirrors that have thinner frames. It usually looks a little bit more modern, more elevated and elegant. When you buy a mirror that has a very thick and chunky frame, it just looks very clunky and cheap and not cute. And the reason I know this is because I actually made this mistake. I found this mirror that was huge and I thought I really liked it, but the frame was very clunky and all of the detailing on top was just doing a little too much. But the great thing is that I bought this mirror off of Facebook Marketplace for $60. So what I can do is I can actually resell the mirror either at the same price or honestly, I can probably sell it for like $150 or even more because it's great quality and it's a very large size. And by selling it, I can give it a whole new life to someone who's really gonna appreciate it probably more than me. This is why I say don't sleep on Facebook Marketplace. This is a mirror that I actually picked up very recently and is replacing the existing mirror on my fireplace mantle. The shape is very Parisian. I also love the color and I feel like for the space that I have on my fireplace mantle, this one just fits a lot better. An account that I think has gorgeous mirrors is Reserve Home. 
home. Her name is Mallory and she actually introduced me to this beautiful style of mirrors which are called pier mirrors. Pier mirrors are super tall. They are usually covered with gold leaf and they have a lot of like ornate detailing up top. I don't think I need to say much. I mean, it's stunning and I feel like it makes her space look very, very special. I believe that this is a shot of the same living room, just the furniture got shifted around. But on the right, you can see a mirror on top of her fireplace mantle. I love this one because it's painted white and it matches the wall color. So it gives it that built-in look. The ornate detailing and the shape is also very Parisian, which I love. And you can see that the frame of the mirror is a little on the thinner side. So it keeps it elevated and elegant. This next one is a little bit crazy, but very much goals. And if you have the budget, buy it. And if the mirror is already painted some color, definitely match that color to your wall. And if it's still its natural wood color, do not, do not, please do not paint it white. Her, mine's giving regal, but on a budget. $20, I literally got it for $20, like that's, freaking good and I will not be painting it white. Okay, up next we're gonna talk about my favorite, which are chairs. Very similar to vintage lights, chairs are sculptural. They can be a piece of art. Personally, I think chairs are a really good investment item. Chairs can be so unique. There are literally so many furniture designers and honestly, that's kind of my dream. I feel like in the future, I would love, love, love to design my own furniture brand and I feel like if I were to start with any piece, it would definitely be a chair. Ooh, the lighting is coming in on me. Am I glowing? Do I look pretty? <laughs> Give me some validation, I need it. Back to chairs, so look at this one. Oh my gosh. Ethan, if you're watching this video, my birthday is coming up. <laughs> this combines a lot of great elements. So it has that chrome slash sterling silver. The legs are this very like deep navy blue color. The wood tone is just right. It's that vintage birch wood finish. Really good chair. And I feel like if you can find any of these elements in a chair that you were drawn to, buy it. Here is another inspo photo. There in the back right, you can see the Wassily chair, which I feel like is very popular and for good reason. The structure has this chrome metal finish. And then there's these beautiful leather straps, which connect it all. It's a little expensive if you're buying the real thing, but there are plenty of replicas which are a little bit more on the affordable side. Even this chair here in the front of the photo is very cute. I love the combination of black leather and chrome. I love it so much <laughs> that I actually bought these chairs. I bought them off of Facebook Marketplace for the best deal. And guess what? They are vintage Italian leather chairs that are worth thousands. I bought four of them for $380. Talk about a steal. Here you see a couple of chairs, but the ones that I really like are the ones that are over in the dining room table. I believe that these dining chairs are actually a vintage Ikea design. And I've actually seen a couple of them on Facebook Marketplace recently. If I didn't already have dining chairs, I would 100% Buy these. Now these chairs are good. It seems like the structure is made out of like a dark bent wood. And then for the actual seat and backrest, it looks like a rich brown leather. If you can find something like that, swoop it up. I love how they introduce color into this chair with that bright blue. Mixing a very natural wood with a bright pop of color, I think is a very smart design choice. And it's something that I personally am looking for right now when buying furniture. Here are some clips of chairs that I found in the Rose Bowl flea market. <laughs> Honestly, this chair is kind of cute and funky too. The next category is vintage beds. Vintage beds are a really great way to add character to a room that is potentially falling flat. Recently, I've been looking for a bed myself and there are really good options on Facebook Marketplace that are honestly pretty cheap. These are some examples of the types of bed styles that I've been looking for. Like, come on, that is so beautiful. The silhouette is very simple, yet it's doing a lot with all the wood grain. I love how the bed is a dark wood finish. And I also love that little chrome light that's in the corner. This next one is a very similar vibe. I'm not sure if this style is actually burl wood. I really like how the silhouettes are simple, yet you can still see all of the wood grain detail. I would mentioned Jenny Lynn beds earlier, and this is a style of bed that I have been loving. I've been seeing a couple of famous interior design brands making beds that look like this. Definitely don't sleep on Jenny Lynn beds. Here's a bed that I found at the Rose Bowl Flea Market that I feel like was almost there, but not fully there, if that even makes any sense. All right, the next category is art. 
Art is really the best way to make your home uniquely your home. And a great way to buy art that's a little more on the affordable side is to buy vintage or secondhand. There are a bunch of vintage oil paintings on Facebook Marketplace, at consignment shops, at flea markets. Just make sure you are not going to Ikea to buy your art. I feel like that is the unbreakable rule. And the reason I say that is because everyone has those pieces and as soon as someone sees it, they're gonna be like, oh, Ikea. Like, don't get me wrong, I love affordable art, but I feel like there's a lot of other options and Ikea art should really be your last resort. When buying and hanging art, I really love the juxtaposition of vintage art and modern art. I think individually they both look stunning, but together, that's an interior designer's home. And very similar to that, if you have a home that has a lot of vintage character and architecture, I would recommend hanging art that's a little bit more on the modern side and vice versa if you have a place that's a little bit more modern very clean cut lines i would definitely recommend hanging up vintage art so when you're looking for vintage art try and buy real oil paintings. I know they can be a little bit more expensive, but I think it's definitely worth it because then you have an actual original art piece. And then when it comes to the modern art pieces, you can usually save some money because a lot of these you can kind of make yourself. They're pretty simple. I feel like my place needs a lot of art. So I feel like I should probably make like a dedicated DIY art video of stuff that you guys can also make. Personally, I have been loving little paintings. My mom actually gifted me this little one and it's what started my whole obsession. Since then, I bought this other painting which is from a flea market in Dana Point and then very recently at the Rose Bowl flea market, I actually bought this painting which is from Italy. The frame is gorgeous and on top of that, it also came with a little brass stand. All right, well, you guys are ready to start buying. Hopefully this video was helpful and now you have some direction of kind of what to look for when vintage shopping just because personally i know that it can be somewhat overwhelming thank you for watching this video make sure to subscribe if you love interior design and home decor content i'm going to be posting all of the progress of me decorating my entire apartment love you and i'll catch you in the next video